Welcome to the Command Modern Air and Naval Operations. This is our basic plotting and mission editor tutorial. The objective is to teach players how to give units orders in the game. There are two methods of unit and group control in the game. The first is a manual process called plotting. It gives players fine grained control to, to draw specific courses and set altitudes and speeds. The second process is the mission editor. It allows players to call AA behaviors to accomplish certain tasks. We expect players to mix, match, and adjust to their playstyle. Let's discuss plotting. To plotting in its course, simply left click it on the map and press the F3 key. You'll notice that the arrow mouse cursor has now become a pointed finger. To drop your first waypoint, simply left click on the map. You'll notice that a gray waypoint has been dropped and a gray course line has been drawn. This is the course that your unit will follow. You can then continue to drop waypoints until your, your course is drawn. When complete, press the F3 key. You'll know the plotting tool is deactivated when your cursor becomes an arrow once again. To make any adjustments to your course, simply select right click any waypoint along the way, turning it yellow, and then press the F3 key again. This will allow you to draw from that point. If you wish to delete your entire plot, simply tap the F3 key twice, which will delete it completely. Now let's adjust altitude and speed. Press the F2 key to call the throttle and altitude setting dialog. You'll notice this dialog has sliders at the top and the bottom, which you can use to adjust speed and altitude. Depending on the unit type, you also have some buttons, which allow you to set some presets. These are all set in the database. Plotting is one a wonderful tool, but the only thing to be careful about is that you do have to account for the weapons release parameters in the game. So it's important to learn what they are so that when you're plotting your attack and your courses, you're at the right altitude to deliver the weapon. To learn your weapon's release parameters, simply go into the platform display by clicking on the aircraft type on the right-hand side unit status menu. When the platform display launches, look under aircraft stores at the speed and altitude release envelopes. Now let's take a look at the mission editor. The mission editor is a tool players can use to call in some useful AI behaviors and routines, or as we call in command, missions. There are numerous classes, from strike missions to patrol missions, support missions, mining and demining, and ferry missions. There are also numerous subtypes under each one of those classes. We suggest that you do read the manual to get an understanding of them and when to use them. There are two primary reasons players would want to use the mission editor. First, it takes care of long and repetitive tasks. So, for example, if you have a, a long anti-submarine warfare patrol, it can take many hours, many plots, and many sauna buoys uh, to carry out the mission. The AI gladly will, leaving the player to carry out other tasks. The other big reason is it puts platforms in the weapons delivery parameters. Players do not have to research or look in the platform display to figure it out. The AI will do its best to do it for them. Moving on, let's demonstrate a patrol and a strike mission. The goal is just to give you a basic understanding of how to use the editor. Let's start by creating an anti-air warfare patrol mission. Um, all patrol missions are area missions, so you've got to define them with reference points. Uh, reference points are simply points that you drop on the map. Uh, you can do so by going to the missions and reference points drop down. Uh, selecting Add Reference Point. Uh, likewise, you could also Control right click and uh, select Add Reference Point. Uh, when you drop it, it'll be a gray X. Um, to select it, simply highlight it. Uh, it'll become a, a yellow diamond. Um, in order to define an area, you have to select all reference points. Um, you can click and drag to move them. Okay, and we've also uh, added a little feature to allow drawing square uh, areas much easier. If you go to define area and you uh, left click and drag, it'll actually drop four reference points, uh, easily defining your area. And you can quickly adjust them to, you know, really any pattern that you want. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move those and then we'll reselect them. Um, if you go to missions and reference points and select uh, add new mission, We'll give it a name, Anti-Air Warfare 1. Uh, mission class, um, it'll be a patrol mission. Uh, mission type, it'll be Anti-Air Warfare Patrol. We'll click OK. And this is the mission editor dialog. Uh, get used to it, you'll be seeing a lot of it. 
On the far right is units unassigned, so it's all the units in your order of battle. Uh, if you click the little pluses, it'll open up um, any drop-down lists. Um, in the middle, you have units assigned to a mission, which is uh, where you actually put units that you want to assign uh, to missions, which are lifted on the left. So we'll go ahead and select that. Um, in this case, it's an anti-air warfare, so we know that we want to add um, fighters with anti-air uh, air missiles. So in this case, we can see that it, they have AMRAMs, and there's one with uh, a JDAM. So the AMRAM armed F-22s are the most appropriate. We'll go ahead and check the boxes. We'll click the left arrow to move them into the box. So now they are assigned to the mission and will be taking on the behaviors. Now, if you look down below, you have a bunch of buttons and mission parameter functions that you can call upon. Uh, to slightly deviate from the uh, different behaviors. Uh, first thing to note is we actually have some ready selected aircraft um, buttons. Uh, this is if you forget to arm your aircraft or you, you need to rearm, you can do it from the mission editor. Um, I'll show you this shortly, but you also have Mark selected as escorts. I'll show you this in the strike mission, but uh, you can actually define uh, uh, certain units as escorts to strike units. Um, under that, you have the mission parameters. So there's the third rule. Uh, the third rule is actually very useful because what you can do is assign, um, you know, a large group of fighters and then only um, say that a third of them will launch at any one point. And so what happens is, is they launch. So if you have, uh, you assign six, two will launch at a time. And then as they are destroyed or they run out of fuel, another pair will replace them. Uh, so it's really useful. Um, then we have investigate contacts outside of patrol area. So you can actually restrict it to the area you defined, or you can have them chase things down outside of that area. And then there's active emissions only inside patrol area. So the transit, they won't be, uh, and no radars will be active, so they're not really, uh, they're harder to detect. But once they get into the area, they'll illuminate. Uh, the other button you want to kind of pay attention to is Mission Doctrine, Rules of Engagement, and MCON. Uh, please do review the manual because this is important in kind of dictating unit behavior. Uh, as you notice, we have the general, so there's used nuclear weapons. Uh, not Probably not applicable for this one. Um, engaged non-hostile targets might be because we may actually want uh, the fighters to not identify the target but just to fire on it. So this one is useful for that. Uh, probably not good if you have neutrals around. Uh, we have RTB Win Winchester, so return the base uh, when most of the uh, long-range weapons are expired. Uh, this is pretty useful because in modern combat, you don't tend to fight to the last missile. You tend to shoot and then uh, um, try to escape before the enemy can bring their long-range weapons uh, onto you. Uh, there's engaging um, ambiguous targets. Uh, that's more for submarines, but it uh, dictates how often things are fired and when they're fired. There's automatic evasion. Um, this actually turns on and off um, the, some of the defensive behavior. Players often get frustrated with their aircraft uh, beaming or running away. You can actually turn this off. Uh, so we find our beta testers have loved this feature. Uh, next thing is maintain standoff. Uh, most applicable to surface vessels. Um, they will stay, um, if they're able to evaluate their enemy, and they have a, 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 an offensive weapons advantage, they'll try and keep it. So they'll stay out of a weapons uh, the enemy's range uh, while keeping within theirs. And then, of course, there's use, refuel, and unwrap. Uh, this basically turns refueling on and off. So if there's a tanker in the area, your fighters will actually go back and take on some fuel and then return to their station. Uh, the other important is your MCON settings. So your missions all have basic... Um, uh, MCOM settings for their active radar, their offensive ECM, and sonar. You can change those. Um, for the most part, the basic default setting is inherent from parents, so inherent from the mission. Uh, but you can actually change these if you'd like. So passive or active, and it'll ask you if you really want to do that. And then uh, you can change it back by just selecting inherit from parent, and then clicking OK. So there's only a couple other things you could do. You could actually change the reference points, add or, or remove. Um, for the mission editor, you can actually make this an active or an inactive uh, mission. Our event editor actually has a neat feature which allows you to trigger it. And if this is in the, within the editor, you can actually scrub the mission if it's on the human side. So we've created our basic mission. We've assigned a couple AMRAMs to it. And that should be about it. And they'll 
go ahead and intercept any target that comes into range. We'll go ahead and start the game and you'll see what happened. So these two fighters were actually assigned to it. There's the area and they're moving towards it. And that's about it. We'll move on to uh, strike mission. So let's look at creating a strike mission. So I added an enemy building. Uh, I designated it as hostile by pressing H. Um, we kind of know what our order of battle is. So I'll start in the mission editor just so you can see how to go back and edit. Because what I'd like to do is unassign those two fighters from the anti-air patrol mission and then create the strike mission. So first for the prerequisite for a strike is you got to be able to designate and see the target. Uh, in this case, it's a building, so it, it's never moved. So you it's set to auto detect. Um, so I'm just going to select it. Um, if you have a mobile unit or something that's not, you, you have to be able to see it in order for the mission to trigger. Uh, this is a little bit hard to understand, but um, command does expect, there has to be eyes on target for it to be designated as one. Uh, once it is, you can create the mission. Uh, you can actually lose it, but you have to at some point at least see it. Um, when you actually go into the mission editor, you'll understand this because you can set um, some units to be seen all the time and some have to be detected by some sensor. So let's get started. Um, so we'll go into the mission editor. And this is the original anti-air warfare mission we set up. Um, we'll go ahead and unassign these. So what you can do is you just check them off in the units assigned to the mission box and you'll move them back over. And see what happened is they moved back over there, so they were unassigned from the anti-air warfare mission. If I actually wanted to delete it, I could just by selecting it, and clicking the delete mission, so it doesn't exist anymore. So we've already selected the, the target, which is the building, so I can just create a new mission by pressing the button here. We'll say building strike. Uh, it's a strike mission, including air intercept. Uh, again, review in the manual what these are. Uh, mission type, it's a land strike. We'll click OK. OK. And if you notice at the bottom, you have a target list. So there's our building large. We'll go ahead and we'll sign all of these because, again, I can show you that neat little button where you can mark, you know, the two missile armed or anti-air warfare missile armed uh, Raptors as escorts. So you can move it over, expand it again. So we know that the JDAM is the bomb. So it'll that'll be assigned to actually strike the target. The other two will be escorts, so we'll check them off and mark selected as escorts. And when you do so, you'll notice it'll turn green and they'll be marked as escorts. So what's really cool is if you have enemy fighters approach, these two will attempt to shoot back and engage them. So we've essentially set up our strike mission. The parameters are similar or the same as we've kind of discussed in the patrol mission. Um, if you do notice here, you have an additional option. Uh, mission triggers when contact is at minimum unknown, hostile, or friendly. Um, this mission actually lets you set like a general strike. So let's say you didn't know that you wanted to strike a building in general, but just any land contact that appeared, you could set it that way, um, just based on its posture. Uh, so that's actually pretty useful. Again, you know, you want to review your MCON and, and your uh, rules of engagement. Uh, in this case, if you actually did have, you know, if you assigned an escort, uh, Prowler, you may want to turn on some offensive e ECM and uh, use those functionalities. And that's really about it. Now let's go ahead and just quickly look and see what happens. And we'll go ahead and unassign these. You'll notice the fighters will then try to meet up. And our Raptor is approaching the target. And that's how you create a strike mission. So we hope you get a basic understanding about how to plot units and, and use the mission editor. Um, there's a couple of different things you can use in the game, and you'll, you'll learn how to mix and mask what you like uh, to accommodate for your play style. Um, we always encourage you to write in and to let us know what you think about the different behaviors. Um, we expect to add more. Um, we expect them to add more missions. We expect them to more, add more rules of engagement. Um, but it's all going to depend on how things shake out for the players. Uh, so please let us know. And uh, don't hesitate to ask us questions within the web forums either. We're more than happy to answer them. Uh, thank you, and enjoy command.